Hey guys, how are you? Steph here. So in this vlog, I'm going to talk about the three stages of app development. Three stages of app development. So I use my nifty new uh, iPad Pro here and I drew out a nifty diagram. So I don't know if you can see that or not, but you see there's step one, two, and three. Step one is UI UX. Step two is database design. Step three is the object creation. Those are the business objects which you write in your programming language of choice, whether it be PHP, Java, C Sharp, Ruby, whatever. So there's a reason for this order of things. Now, back in the day, everybody was taught that when you're designing apps, you would design the object model first. The object model in red. Object model means just the code that you write in your language of choice. Now this video, by the way, is for people who've done like my beginner's course on Python or my course on uh, my full stack web development course. I assume you have some knowledge. This is taking it to the next level. So the first thing you want to do is step number one in blue. Step number one in blue, you want to do your UI and your UX. Now you're not going crazy in terms of making it look super beautiful, but you might do like a simple little sketch like this. And the whole point of designing UI and UX first, user interface, user experience to a lesser extent at first is just to get a rough idea of what it is the app is all about. Whether it be a, an app for, for a phone, mobile app, or whether it be a web app. By designing your screens first, screens is UI UX, it will allow you to map out what exactly is going to appear in front of the user. Now, the reason I don't go to the objects to do that first is because it's too abstract. It's too, uh, in other words, when you design your app from objects, it's too detached from what people are actually going to see and use in the real world. It doesn't work so well, I find. I found over the years. So I found a much better approach, whether it be building apps for myself or for clients, was to design the screens because you see exactly what's there. So let's say I was building a dating site. What I would do is I would first list out the various pages I would have. So in this example, very simple, I'd have a home page, I'd have a sign up page. I don't even know if this is in view or not. We'll see what happens with the exposure. So I would have a home page, a sign up page, and a main page where they would, you know, they would land once they've logged in. They see all the people in the dating site, they could do the searches and so on. So I would first list out the three screens as I've done here. So you see I'm using arrows and so forth to map out, to point out where, when you click on major buttons, where it takes you. So if you click on log out, it takes you back to the home page. You click on sign up on the home page, it takes you to the sign up page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just very rough and basic stuff. And then when you get into the various pages, I would draw out a page like so, and I would draw out the various fields, the boxes, what would appear in the page. So the first stage of laying out your pages is to just do a quick sketch, quick drawing. It could be on a pad, it could be on a piece of paper and pad, etc. Then the next step is to do the quick layout, where things are going to be positioned, right? Each step along the way you show your client. Your client could be somebody who's paying you or it could be just yourself. And step three, you kind of refine where things are positioned. It's not like a final look and feel to make it look beautiful, just positioning. This is where using some free templates where you know they have a two column, three column, that kind of thing. You can get them on the web for free. Again, just for structuring the position of elements on their page. And the whole point of this exercise is really just to figure out exactly what's going to appear in your page. That's the key. What's going to appear in your page? Why don't you figure out what's going to appear in your page by way, by way of the screens and your clients can see that clearly because they'll say, oh yeah, we want a login page. Yeah, we like to know the members here. We like this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then the next step, is to go in yellow to the databases. Databases, you design your databases. I'm not going to teach you about database design here, but most of us are using an SQL-based database, a relational database, a tables-based database. And since you've done your UI, the UI, what's in the UI will tell you what fields, what tables, what columns you're going to have inside of your database. It makes it much easier. Then finally, the last stage, the last stage is in red, is you do your object model. You actually write the core code, whether it be in PHP and Python and JavaScript, whatever language you want to use, 
you write your color code that will basically connect the database to your user interfaces. That's pretty much it. This is an effective process because it allows for your client to see exactly what's going on, it allows you to better map what data you're holding. It's, uh, it look, works pretty good. Now, of course, this doesn't necessarily apply to writing C++ to, uh, on, on I don't know, small devices like a heater or something, or you're programming a robot or something. This, of course, does not apply. This is for your typical mobile app, your typical web app, website. This is the structure that works really, really well. And it's just going to save you a lot of time if you build your apps using this process. All right. I hope this vlog is useful. Ciao, ciao.